Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about LC ladder filter design. This is our example number two. In this example we will look again at the elliptic response of a low pass filter, but then in this case of a higher order, in this case a fifth order filter. Of course we will work out everything step by step in our calculations and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our objective. We like to design an elliptic response filter must be a passive LC ladder low pass filter configuration and we need to use a 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit. This will be clear clarified shortly. The generalized filter is shown here and we need to design this and the normalized values for our source and the load resistor are shown also here which are 1 ohm each. The specifications for this example are the following. We need to have a maximum pass width ripple a max of 0. 2803 dB, which is shown here as a row, which is our reflection coefficient of 25%. The minimum stop and attenuation must be 60 dB, and we have a pass band frequency of 1 MHz, and the stop and frequency must be 2 MHz. So these are the specifications. This is actually similar to the example number one about the elliptic response. So we have in this case a different pass band ripple, also a higher required minimum stop and attenuation. So let's look at our solution step by step. First step is we need to calculate the filter order and for that we need to know the transition sharpness and also reuse a table for the minimum required attenuation here. Now the sharpness we have required transition sharpness is defined by this equation you see here the omega r the sharpness and that's equal to the omega s over omega p or fs over fp and we know that must be then 2 MHz over 1 MHz, so that would be then just 2. So how do we now determine what the filter order must be? This is an important uh, information, but we also need to use this stop and attenuation as the information. Now looking at this table, which is a table for a fifth order uh, elliptic response filter, we can see here that they're actually defined for the low pass filter, and they're all normalized values here. Now what you see is this column here is going down from 3.0716 as the transition sharpness all the way down and it will then reduce. You can also see the A minimum for each uh, part and then the normalized value for the components up from C1, C2, L2, etc. And this is now for this ripple we have also here. So. Now what is now what we want? Now we want at max 2 as the transition sharpness and at minimum 60 dB for our stop and attenuation. Now looking at a table we can actually pinpoint already that this is where we need to look at because we need at least, I, I mean at max 2, so going up will be then not what we wanted here and we also need to have the 60 dB minimum so it's actually above this. So, so we need to fulfill this and this column together according to our specification. Now we see here 2 and it's now 63.47 which is fine but if I go up that's not enough for our transition sharpness. will be of course okay for a minimum but not for our omega r. Going down in omega r it's even better but then at some point I get lower than 60 dB which is also not allowed. So I can actually choose between 12, 13 and a 14 row here. So there are three options. So from the specification, we require a fifth order filter as set, and now we have NS5, and this is now the part I have taken out here. And you can select any row here for this design, it doesn't matter. You just get a specification for your filter, and that then creates actually a couple of options. So to satisfy the requirements, as I said before, we need to have a maximum of omega r of 2 and a minimum of 60 dB. Now we can choose then a set between 12, 13 and 14 the rows. So in this case, I will go for the row here, 12, which is this one, made, and that's actually made bold here. So these are the coefficients for our circuit, this one. And this is actually the circuit. We can see this is the fifth order, this part. This is the fifth order filter circuit for this elliptic response. You see the C1, which is this value, normalized in farads. C2, which is this, and L2, the value here. And you see the C3, which is here, and so actually in order, you see all the values here. So in total we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven 
normalized values. There are of course here 1 ohm and 1 ohm for the RS and RL. Okay. Step 2 is the calculation of the frequency scaling factor, which is actually a setting value, not actually a calculation. So that is really just omega p, which is 2 pi times the fe, which is then 2 pi times 1 megahertz, which is just, of course, 1 megahertz in hertz. Okay, now taking this all together, we know that we need these coefficients, the normal line, and this is our circuit, so we need to now scale it up. So, for the third step, step three, is calculate the scaled component values. We need to go from here to here. You see the primes here, so everything is now scaled up to the required 50 ohm for the resistors and also for the frequencies we have here. So, what we do first, we look at the formulas for scaling up the capacitors. You see here the C1 prime is then C1 from here, divided by the Km, which is 50, again, because we go from 1 ohm to 50 ohm. And then here the Kf, which is our frequency scaling factor of 2 pi times 10 to the power 6. Now, when you do the calculation, you get the 4.431 nanofarads. In a similar form for C2 prime, now you get this entry, which is this much picofarads. Now, L2 prime, which from this coefficient, now the Km is here, but the Kf will be then in the denominator. Again, you calculate this. And a C3 prime from this coefficient and C4 prime and L4 prime in a similar form. So you actually follow these coefficients one by one. And now the final one is C5 prime. And of course also the RS prime and RL prime are there 50 times 1, which is 50 ohm. And also the other one is 50 ohm, RL prime. Now we have our components all together. Now let's summarize them here. So we have now here the nine components for our filter. Actually seven for the filter and one for the source and one for the load. All scaled up. Okay, now the design circuit here in the filter is shown here. This first one is our prototype low pass filter, which is in the unskilled version, normalized version. And this part is the final design with the RS50 ohm and RL50 ohm and all the components are as calculated here. You can see that. So let's now look at the simulation result for this circuit. This is the body plot for the gain. You can see the gain here and some labels. And we will now discuss one by one for this circuit is this plot. What does it actually mean? So let's go for the first label, which is our low frequency gain, which is minus 6.02 dB. Because the gain at the pass band at DC in this case is 50 over 50 plus 50, which is then 50 over 100, which is 0 0.5. And then 20 block of 0 0.5, that means minus 6.02 dB approximately. So that is exactly as expected. The next one is the passband frequency and also the ripple. We see here at 1 megahertz, which we actually look at, the value here of the gain is minus 6.3 point, I mean, minus 6.3011 dB. Now that means from the baseline we go down by this much, which is very close to what we need as the maximum pass band rate. It's just a hair larger 0.002 dB, but it is uh, looking at the rounding of errors pretty okay. So we can say that this is also fulfilled. Now the stop and attenuation, which is then this part, you see the minus 69.5 dB approximately at 2 megahertz. Again, from going to the from the baseline down all the way here, it goes down by 63.47 dB. That is more than the required minimum of 60 dB. So again, this is also according to specifications. Now, in addition, we have some extra information about the cutoff frequency, which is not what we have calculated, also not the requirement. But you see here that is also shown here 1.0709 megahertz. You see also two notches here because that that is actually the uh, effect of the th fifth order filter. There's also a ripple here that can be seen if we zoom in here a little bit. That's shown here because when you zoom in in this part, you can see here the ripple is. So you can see the the peaks and the valleys and the peaks and the valleys and the peak and also the part where we stop with the ripple. And so we have a pass band ripple and we have a stop band ripple. That is the characteristics of a elliptic response and this part here at this region from the maximum to the minimum for the ripple that is the maximum allowed ripple here which is on 0.2803 db 
In this case, it is a little bit larger, but again, due to rounding of errors in our scaling of our components, this is perfectly fine. So we can say the design is according to the specification and completed. All right, guys, this is our example number two, considering elective response filter for a low pass filter. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.